Hello, my darlings. I hope you're all doing well. This video that you're watching is going to be another art-related video. And as you probably already noticed, we're working on a painting today. And this painting has already been um, finished as far as the painting portion goes. But what we're doing next now is all of the line work. So I figured that I'd save that for the video. Because the last painting video I did, a lot of you commented and said that the most satisfying part was watching all of the lines at the end because that's when it really comes together. <laughs> so when I was sketching this, I originally thought, you know, I'd love to do an ASMR of it somehow in some capacity. And then it was too involved of a piece to make a video about the whole process. Because this was like, you know, a seven hour paint job. Because you have to do lots and lots of layers and, you know, it was going to be much too long to do <laughs> from start to finish. I wanted to do something, so I figured we'll just do the line work. So I'm going to show you what we're going to be using today. The first is, for the majority, this Speedball Black Super Ink. And this is very inexpensive. This is just regular India ink. It costs about $8 for one of these little containers. Are not very expensive. And so that's what I'm going to be using the majority of the time. And with that, take a couple of paintbrushes here. Just a very fine tip. And then for the thicker bits, I have this brush pen that unfortunately I don't know the name of. You've seen me use this before though. It has this tip on it, that, and there's ink all in here, but for the purpose of this painting, I usually just dip it in the pot and then paint. And then I also have a couple of Tombow markers. Now I don't really know. them here. And lastly, I have this Pilot Super Color White Permanent Ink Marker, which I've never used. It's brand new. It's extra fine. And I bought this because I really wanted um, a white gel pen kind of thing. I couldn't find exactly what I wanted, but I'm anxious to try this one because it looks pretty I tried it on another piece of paper, kind of, just for a quick second, and it worked pretty well. And I also really like the little tick-tick sounds it makes, because there's a little ball in here, or a little piece of metal. Because this is full of ink, right? So, that's how you mix it up. So let's get started. So I usually like to keep a piece of paper towel um, under my hand when I'm working because just <laughs> in case I've accidentally rubbed any ink here on the palm of my hand, I don't smear it all over the piece. made that mistake before. <laughs> you learn things the hard way, it seems. Okay, so I'm gonna start in with the fun part, because why not? So, this painting is of Cinderella, because I'm kind of on a Cinderella kick right now. 
see the live action movie in theaters and I really liked it but I haven't seen it since then and I recently rewatched it and I remembered how much I liked it it's the first live action Disney movie in a while that I've actually liked I didn't care too much for Maleficent um, and Alice in Wonderland was only okay for me. The costumes were great, but a lot of the other parts I didn't really care for. But Cinderella really gave me that, that feeling in my heart that I get when I watch a really special movie for the first time, and particularly Disney movies. Feel the magic. Do you know what I mean? And I felt that way when I watched Cinderella the first time in theaters, and again when I watched it recently. So, in my sketchbook, I've been doing a lot of little Cinderella related doodles, and I finally decided, you know what? I should just go all out and do the Cinderella painting that I clearly want to do. Which is to say I wanted to do something a little extravagant. I wanted to paint Cinderella living at her new life in the castle. But I think that she'd still make friends with all the mice. I don't think something like becoming a princess would change who Cinderella is. I think that that can be said of all of us, you know, like, you can let changes determine who you are, but they don't have to, you know, and I don't think Cinderella highlight in here. Sorry if I'm quiet right now. It's a complicated, well not complicated, but it's kind of one of those things where if you mess up the eye, it's pretty hard to hide that, right? I don't It's funny because when I was a little girl, um, I obviously loved watching the Disney cartoon movies, but um, I didn't really get too into Cinderella. I wasn't really a princessy kind of girl when I was little, which may surprise a lot of you. I was actually um, very into masculine things when I was a kid just the point I was at, and um, I liked the movies with the animals much better. They were just more up my alley at the time, and subsequently, um, Cinderella was never a favorite of mine. Not even just the movie, but the character. If I hadn't had to pick a princess back then, I think it probably would have been Belle. I liked her courage. But now as an adult watching Cinderella, like I think that Cinderella is just as courageous. I think that when you're a kid, you can see courage as fighting a bad guy. As a grown-up, you see courage as getting through your day. Because it's not always easy. 
especially when you're enduring something like Cinderella was. Just really rough. So I think that's a different kind of courage. As Pearl would say, strong in the real way. And that's the kind of courage I admire now as an adult. But I really like Cinderella now, especially the live-action movie. Although I will have to say Tiana is still my favorite. I think it goes Tiana, then Cinderella, then Aurora. Although, I wonder, do you count Giselle from Enchanted? I don't know. It gets muddled in there, I love Giselle. I love doing little details. I think that's why I like I could handle doing all of the work there in the curtains. I just love tiny little details. They're so much fun. This piece is not that big. I'm sure you can probably tell. It's about average size. Just do a full ear in here. Fill this in a little bit. There we go. I'm using a really gentle hand doing these details on the roses because I don't want to use the same thick lines that I used for the face. I want the roses to be super tight. So the brush that I'm using is a synthetic sable brush, and it's so tiny. It's probably my second tiniest, or maybe my tiniest brush that I own. It's, I mean, I'm sure you can tell. It's like three strands. <laughs> three little fibers. There's basically nothing to it. What you need sometimes. I had to go out and buy um, some new watercolor paper here because um, I'm traveling right now and oh my gosh, it was such a struggle trying to pack my art supplies. <laughs> Not like a physical struggle, but for example, I travel a lot, so I'm really good at packing outfits now. It's, I kind of have, like, my staples of what I always bring, and you, you get good at packing the more that you do it. So I'm at the point now where I'm quite good at packing clothes, and I know in my head little outfits and what accessories go with what, and it's no problem. Packing art supplies is so different because I don't want to say like I'm an art supply hoarder but my brain always goes to that place where it's like but what if I need this? But you really can't bring any everything, you know, like especially art supplies are so heavy trying to pack those is absurd. So at one point I just finally resolved myself to the fact that I have to only bring the things that I can't live without, absolutely. For example, my brushes and certain markers. But I was, I just had to resolve myself to the fact that I was just going to have to, like, buy some replacements while I was here because packing them would just be impossible. I'm just going to switch the camera angle a little bit so you can see better. So this paper is a 300 pound watercolor paper. Which I think 
think I've mentioned is what I usually use. I'm like super picky when it comes to watercolor paper. Weirdly enough, I'm not that picky when it comes to paint. I know it sounds wrong, like it sounds like that's the thing I should care about, but most of the time when it comes to paint, if you know what you're doing, you can kind of fudge it. You can kind of make do with whatever paint. <laughs> and I mean, most of the time that's how I feel with supplies, like even markers. I use Crayola kids markers sometimes, like if you know what you're doing, you kind of can fudge I'm, oh my gosh, I'm so particular about the paper. Because if you have a lower weight of watercolor paper, it all just buckles and it looks rotten. I don't like it. <laughs> I'm so finicky when it comes to paper. The paper is like the tell. Paper is the thing I recommend if you're interested in art or interested in painting. Paper is the spot where you splurge, at least when it comes to watercolor paper. You can kind of fudge it in other spots, but you can't you can't fudge the paper. It just does what it wants. I like to do super thin lines in spots where the light would touch and then make them a bit thicker. Near towards darker shadows. Just think it adds that something special. So a lot of you on these types of videos ask about why I use blue pencil. Um, which you can probably tell is what I've used underneath the actual painting part. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one, and this is the most important one, is that And that is the reason I do a lot of the things that I do, is because I just feel like it. There's no quantifiable reasoning. It's just that I like it, and that's what I do. But the reason I started using them is because they're really great if you're doing sketches that you then scan into your computer. If you're someone who likes to do digital art, it's really wonderful to um, do your sketch in blue and then you can scan it in and using Photoshop, you can just eliminate all the blue, get rid of your underneath sketch. But also, the lead in blue varipin pencils, which is what I a lot less noticeable and underneath the painting than, for example, a lead pencil, which you then have to go to great lengths to then erase, or you can leave it under. Some people like that look, but not so much me. So that's my thought process behind that. But well, like I said, most importantly, I just do whatever. <laughs> There's no rhyme or reason. You start doing something sometimes, and then 
just keep doing it. If it works, don't fix it. So you can see how um, the rest of the painting would have taken a really long time <laughs> just based on how slowly I'm doing these lines. But I think it's important to take your time. I do, well, I try to do everything that I think love and care. That way you can feel my heart put into it. Just <laughs> what I try to achieve. I think that no matter whatever you do, whether it's art, whether you're an athlete, just do it the best you can. Whatever you do, do it. Do it well. Because it's worth doing. There's no need to rush. <laughs> I would like to do videos like this all the time, art videos. I know I said a while ago that I wanted to do them kind of once a week. Obviously that didn't happen, <laughs> but I really would like to do that. I'll try harder to make that a possibility, even if not once a week. Often is better than nothing, right? Do some There's a bird that's giving me trouble right now. Gosh, I hope you couldn't pick that up, but she's squawking. She wanted attention. That's what I get for painting Cinderella, right? All the birds want to come in and sing their little songs. Although that didn't sound so much like a song. <laughs> she sounded angry, like, get away from my little eggs. Don't you touch my little eggs. And we were like, sorry, Mrs. Bird, we weren't bothering you. We have a little balcony here, and sometimes there's birds that sit on it. And wouldn't you just know that the cats love that? The cats are just like, oh, come closer. <laughs> just tempting them. Another little room. this down a little bit. I hope that you're having a good night tonight. It's September now. And that's the time of new beginnings. Maybe it's a new beginning for you. Maybe you're starting school or a new job. Maybe you move to a new area. A lot of people 
we'll do that this time of year. But I hope it goes okay for you. I know you're gonna do well. Just try your best, okay? I'm gonna try my best too. We'll all work hard together. I think that we can make the end of this year really good. And then 2016 will be even better. But it will be nice to look back and feel pride knowing that we did our best. <laughs> That's the last little rose. little swirls. So, I went ahead and finished up um, a couple of parts uh, without you guys just because this ended up taking a lot longer than I thought it would. <laughs> but I wanted to make sure that we did all these little fun details in here together. All these little bows and the hands, of course. this ring on, and it, I think it's a little too big, because it keeps kind of dirty. <laughs> it's so cute, though. I just have to pretend it fits properly, I guess. It's just only slightly too big. I don't have a, a lot of gold jewelry, so most of my jewelry is silver or white gold, so few gold pieces I have. Try to wear them together. So this is a little teacup here. And we just got our hands around the handle. And the little mouse is right here. sure which mouse this is. It's one of her pre-existing mouse friends, or well, let's pretend that it's one of the new mice friends that she meets in our new castle. <laughs> you know, I've actually heard good things about the animated Cinderella sequels, but I haven't actually sat down and watched there's one that's kind of about one of her stepsisters and how she turned out to not be so bad. If you know what I'm talking about, you'll know. But I've, I've heard that that one's actually pretty okay. I haven't watched it yet. I should sit down and marathon them all at some point. That'd be fun. A tiny little nail here. Yeah, just like that. I love doing hands. They're so much fun. Last fall, I think it was, I did a thing where I tried to draw a hand like every day. And I think for like a month I did that. It was so great. I should do something like that again. It really, um, really helps your skill to do something like that. Even if you're really bad at the thing, whatever it is, if you do it over and over again like that, like you will get better. You will improve. It's basically guaranteed. 
I really ought to do that with like cars or something like gosh I couldn't draw a car to save my life <laughs> of course I don't really have any interest in cars and that's probably why but still I think it's important as an artist to know how to draw a lot of different things something that I would also like to get better at drawing is animals. I do okay, but I think that my animals don't look too realistic because I make them too cute. <laughs> but as much as I would like to say that's my style, and it is, but I would like to get better. Always room for improvement. But yeah, that's how I got better at drawing hands, so. you're ever looking for art tips, my tip would be challenge yourself to draw that thing every day for like a month and then just compare the ones you drew at the beginning of the month to the ones you drew at the end. You will be just amazed with how much better you've gotten. There's the one on those side. a cute little mousy. I think mice are so precious. I had a friend growing up who had a pet mouse. He was really cute. I don't know if I could have one as a pet though, because I like bigger animals that I can pick up and snuggle and not feel too afraid. I feel like you can still snuggle mouse or something like that, but I don't want to be worried that I'll hurt them. And then the little tail in here, let's see. Precious little mouse tail. Look at that. <laughs> I think I gotta go over it again though. The line wasn't too thick. And finish up some of this. And here. try to save my favorite parts for last. So that's usually little details like this. Usually, actually, I would leave the face until last if I were doing something like this. But I think I got a little too excited about it. And I went right for so many pretty little folds in the fabric. Usually, if something is going to have like complicated folds, um, I might look at a reference, but for this I didn't. Only because with dresses, it's pretty easy to figure out kind of how they're going to lay. And as a connoisseur of <laughs> frilly, over-the-top dresses, you kind of get used to their design.
I would love to have a dress like this. I have some frillier dresses, but not something as grandiose as this, certainly. I think that comparably, like, some of Lolita dresses are similar to this in how fluffy they are. But still, these usually don't even have regular petticoats. They have like a, a metal cage underneath to keep them like ridiculously fluffy. <laughs> I think I would love to take some books out from the library maybe when I get home. Um, these types of dresses and the many different layers of under things that are required to wear them to be underneath. It's very interesting to me. It's kind of an art, don't you think? <laughs> 